Good morning. I'm Bucky Stokes and my website is mountupdesign.com. Today we're going to be talking about how God deals with us, how we are justified by God. Now let's first of all, let's look at Psalm 103 and we're going to start reading at the 10th verse. We're going to jump right into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. God does not deal with us according to our sins. Now, that, that's kind of hard for us to understand sometimes because sometimes we're carrying around guilt from sins that we have committed and we just haven't really forgiven ourselves or asked, certainly haven't asked God to forgive us. So we've got to do that. But God, after we have forgive, we have been forgiven, he's not going to deal with us according to those sins. And certainly, um, even when we sin, we are still God's children. And he knows that. And we, he knows what we're made out of. So let's read that whole thing. <clears throat> God does not deal with us according to our sins. nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. We have a Savior in Jesus Christ. And we can just put our sins right there at the foot of the cross and they're going to be forgiven because we believe that he died for us so that our sins will not be held against us on and on the devil will hold them against us if he can but he can't do it because jesus defeated him at calvary so god god's not going to deal with us according to our sins not if we're children of god and certainly not if we have asked forgiveness based on our confession that Jesus is Lord. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord Jesus shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? Because there's no way According to the law, according to the, the sinful man can ever be justified. There's just no way to do it. The law can't do it uh, because we're, we're, we're made out of flesh and bones that was from the de dust of the earth. And who in the world contaminated the dust of the earth? When Satan was thrown down, he contaminated the dust of the earth. He and all of his um, evil angels, let's call them that, all of his gang, when they were thrown down to earth, they contaminated the earth. So whenever man was born, a woman, that contamination went on. So we're not, we're not able to deal with that. Our flesh is forever sinful. The only thing we can do is make sure that we are forgiven. And we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Now, let's, then if he doesn't deal with us according to our faith, how does he deal with us? Let's read something from Habakkuk, the prophet. <clears throat> the second chapter. The first through the fourth verses. Now, Habakkuk has got a problem. He's got a problem, and I think we've talked about Habakkuk before, but he's got a problem that God is allowing the Chaldeans to come out, come up and ravish the land of, of Israel, or Judah as it was then. So let's, let's see what, what happens. Uh, he's very angry. So he says, well, all right, but I'm going to take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower. This is Habakkuk 2, beginning to read the first verse. And look out to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer concerning my complaint. Because he definitely had a complaint. And the Lord answered me. Write the vision. Write the vision. In other words, what do you see? What do you want to see? 
with your spiritual eyes. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets. In other words, put it in writing. So he may run who reads it. Who is that? That's, that's the angel. Our angels. Our angels. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. It's going to happen. But sometimes we've got to stand in order for it to happen. Behold, he says in verse 4, his soul is buff, puffed up in him. It is not right, upright within him. It can't happen. But the righteous shall live by his faith. Righteousness and faith are interchangeable words. That's, that's how God deals with us. According to our faith. Now let's read a little bit more. Let's read in the New Testament. Romans 5.1. Romans 5.1 tells us that we are justified by faith. So we know that. And Romans 1, uh, 16, 17. Let's read that. I'm gonna, I want to read that. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a very good confession, by the way. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for in it, in it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes in it. I'll read that again. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul writes, for in it is the power of God to provide salvation for you and me. In it is the power of God for salvation to everyone, not just you and me, but everyone who believes in it. That is, that Jesus is the Son of God the Father, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from his faith in his own word. For our faith, that God will do what he says he will do. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. We are justified by faith. We'll live by faith. <clears throat> so, what does God expect us to do? We've got a clue in the parable of the, of the talents. Because in the parable of the talents, the, the, as we know in, in um, Matthew, as we know, uh, the owner of the estate, he went on a long trip and entrusted his prop property to three of his servants. The one he gave uh, five talents, and the other two, and another one. But the, and the one that had the five talents doubled them. The one that had the two talents doubled them while the man was gone. But the one who had the one talent buried it in the ground. And he said, oh, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that the master, when he comes back, is going to punish me spiritually. Well, what he didn't know was that when the master did come back, yeah, he got punished all right, but he got punished for not investing it, not doing something with it. And that, so that's how God deals with us. He wants us to, to do something with the faith that we have been given. He has assigned all of us a measure of faith. The Word tells us that. He's assigned all of us a measure of faith. It's up to us as to what we do with that measure of faith. But we certainly want to please Him because that's how He's going to deal with us. On, on, while we're on this earth, sinful creatures as we are. But faith, faith is of the Spirit. Now, courage might be very well of the, of the flesh, but, but faith has got to generate courage. So faith is of the Spirit, and that's what he's looking on. He's looking on our spirit man. He's not, he's not trying to find a way to find fault with us. God, God knows what we're made out of. But he just wants us to do something with that faith that we have. He expects us to do it. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word today. Thank us for showing us how you deal with us. Thank, us for, thank you for showing us again that our faith in Jesus Christ is our Lord. 
is faith indeed that he is going to, God is going to count on that faith to also urge us to do what we can, we can possibly do with the faith that he has assigned to us. I don't know what that faith is for you or me. I don't know what that portion is, that measure is. But whatever, God says, whatever I give you, whatever I, what faith I have assigned to you, do something with it. Do something with it. Because I'm going to deal with you that way. I expect you to do something with that faith, with that measure of faith. Thank you, Father, again, for this word. Thank you so much, Father. And Father, I just ask that you would bless those who, who look, uh, listen today and are, are supporting this ministry. Uh, we just ask that you would bless them so much, Father. Just, just bless them exceedingly with the abundant life. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. See y'all next time.